do. We're going to start talking about communication. And uh, commu- how many of you have ever had communication problems? Oh, man. How many of you, it was the other guy's fault? Yeah, always, always. It's always that. Now, you don't see what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, listen to what I'm saying, you know. So we're going to talk about communication, and we're going to borrow a little bit from our previous study in Habakkuk. One of the things that we learned about in Habakkuk is the five woes that God warned Habakkuk about. And he gave him a warning, and it has to do with the, the greediness of your mind, the self-protection, the violence with which you sometimes speak and act. And we'll get to that. I'm going to show you a very familiar picture to some of you that have been here through the Habakkuk study. And we're going to kind of take the next step. We're not in Habakkuk anymore, but some of what we learned in Habakkuk is going to set the table for communication. Now, how many of you know there's, there's more than one part of communication, right? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yeah, what? Somebody say, what? Huh? Have you seen this commercial? For the hearing aids where, I love you, Dad. What? I love you, Dad. What? And the son just shakes his head. Anything they can get. I'm trying to reenact the whole commercial. How many of you have seen this commercial? They can charge anything they can get. And uh, I can now get hearing aids for $500. And this guy's excited. The whole point is his son's trying to say, I love you, Dad. And the dad just can't hear him. And I'm telling you, that, that commercial is cheesy as I'll get out, and it'll wear you out. And my, my wife, literally, if she walks through the room while that commercial's on, she's like, mute it, I can't take it anymore, I hate that commercial. And I'm just angry about communication. That's, uh, it's been her fault all along, that's what I was saying. And uh, so the communication, right, we, we can sometimes get bogged down in trying to be heard and trying to hear. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about communication. Let me tell you what my entire goal is. My entire goal of this whole series is not that our church never has communication problems. I don't expect that. In fact, I think if all of us could just very astutely learn this, understand it in the core of our soul, and take it to the deepest levels of of productivity inside our hearts, I still think we're going to have communications issues. Uh, Our staff miscommunicates all the time. Uh, marriages miscommunicate all the time. Parents to children miscommunicate all the time. Can you just miscommunicate your parents all the time when they talk like this? They miscommunicate. Teenagers that mumble and don't open their mouths. Mis- uh, Tammy and I went last night. This is hilarious. We went last night to Verizon to get Tammy uh, a phone. And we stopped at a different Verizon than the one here in Marion. I'll say that, okay? It was not local. Uh, but, man, this guy would not open his mouth. Now, he's selling communication devices and he's just like you know i mean when you come here we're not an authorized dealer so it's really a better service here when you come here today. and i'm looking me and tammy are just leaning leaning in leaning in leaning in across the desk and and we're we're sitting at a desk and she's like hitting my leg like like what what's what's he doing you know she's panicking with this right hand here on my leg and he's like, yeah, it's really a good deal. Yeah, we got a combo pack. You could buy this, this. And he's like, I'd like to tell you what we got going with our iPads, too. We got this good deal on our iPads. Bro. And, man, it was terrible. And I thought one of two things is happening. We're finally old, and he's fine, and we're jacked up. <laughs> and we hit it on the same day like, like, you know, like lovers from high school would do. You know, I mean, we landed there on the same day. Or this dude had a problem, and we concluded he had a problem. I'm pretty sure he concluded we were officially an old couple. But um, the, the bottom line was there was some communication issues. He gave me a deal, and then when he said the price of the, uh, all we got was like a phone case, a screen protector, and then because of this amazing combo, we got this little add-on thing. $153 later. But because we communicated so bad, I was like, that sounds good. Yes, yeah, just here, take the money, let's go. We left, and Tammy said, man, thanks for the stuff. And I'm like, I'm just glad to get out of the place. That was incredible. That, that, that is a really good salesman technique there. Make them so sick of you, they'll buy anything. And, uh, but anyway, communication problems happen everywhere, right? Hopefully he's not here today. If you are, man, great job. I appreciate what you did last night. That was good. Uh, communication is tough. Communication sometimes uh, leaves both people more frustrated than if they'd have never even attempted communication. And by the way, whose goal would that be? God's or Satan's? 
Satan loves to be divisive and divide and tear apart and tear down. So Satan is very involved in communication. Somebody say Satan is involved. You need to know that. When you're talking to one other person, there is another person involved or another being involved. His name is Satan and he is trying to do what he does best to confound the situation. Now, the more important the conversation is for healing, the more he is attacking the conversation that's taking place. Everybody understand that? Everybody just talk very quietly to the person next to you for just a second. Just tell them how your week went. Everybody just real quietly lean over. <laughs> How's it going? Right? You were doing good until I decided to confound the situation with a bunch of white noise, right? <laughs> you know, that's what Satan's doing. Satan is just people that are streaming are going, something's wrong with my computer again. They're hitting their computer right now. It's not your computer. I did that on purpose. But here's the thing. Communication is tough enough without that third party, right? Have you ever been trying to talk to your spouse when the kids are going nuts in the back seat? Normally the kids are going nuts in the back seat and you're like, this is great, family vacation. But when you're trying to communicate and the kids are going nuts, like, would y'all stop it back there? I mean, you just, and they're like, what? You know, what? okay, yeah. And, and you get that two seconds of silence. You're like, as I was saying. Then you realize you don't want the kids to hear what you were communicating about. And so you just kind of look at each other like, it's like you can't, you can't have it both ways. You, you, you can't have the cover and the concentration. You just kind of get one or the other. So communication is very easy to derail. It's very easy to mess up. And by the way, Satan's been working at it for a couple thousand years now. He's pretty good at it. So here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about uh, communication. I'm going to give you some verses to kind of lay the groundwork. I'm going to share about four, uh, four verses at least with you here. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 8. Why don't you look at this verse? I got it up here. You could turn it if you want, but I'm going to be jumping to four different verses, different places. Their tongue is as an arrow shot out. Everybody shoot your arrow out real quick, right? You ever stick your tongue out at somebody when you're little and get in trouble for that? I don't know if that's popular anymore. It was just kind of... I, I, I don't see a lot of people doing it anymore. I think there's emojis now, and you can passive-aggressively just post something so the tongue isn't nearly necessary. But, man, there, I've had little kids before. Like, I'm one of those guys that when I'm standing in line, I'll mess with a kid over there, you know, like make a face at him. And I have them, every once in a while, a kid will just go. I'm like, wow, well, okay, we're done. You know, that's, that's good. <laughs> like an arrow, man, just bam. Uh, we, we can say a lot with our facial expressions, but it's not talking about just sticking your tongue out. It's talking about the words that come off your tongue are like arrows. And here's what it says. Their tongue is an, is an arrow shot out. It speaketh deceit. One speaketh peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth, but in heart he layeth his weight. It's kind of like, it's kinda, I don't think deer hunters do this because I think you're supposed to be real quiet. But in their head, let me tell you what it sounds like. It's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm going to eat you. Come on out there. That's, that's kind of what's going on. Real quiet, real friendly, dear estrogen, urine. They do cra Hunters do crazy stuff, man. They smell like yuck. It's okay. Go on out. I'm going to kill you. I mean, it's rough. This is, this is exactly what some of us do with our tongue. Hey, how are you doing today? Glad you're here. Sit by me. I'm not creepy at all. I mean, it's, it's weird, you know. You're kind of like, if you could really know what's going on in some people's minds, you know. Uh, this, is, this, the, this is the Bible now telling you that there are people that though their mouth is moving, their heart is not. Though their mouth is friendly, their heart is not. How many of you dads of teenage girls want them to know this? Everything that drips with honey isn't sweet. You know, oh, I just love the way he makes me feel and the way I squeal when he makes me feel. He says the nicest thing. And let me tell you something. I ain't buying it. Not buying it. No, I'm going to wait. I'm going to watch. I'm going to be careful because talk is 
cheap. Heart is where it's at. And God looks for a man or a woman after his own heart, not his own speech or his own talk. This is one of the foundational verses to this series. And here's what you need to understand. Remember, I'm not trying to fix all the communication in our church. I'm trying to help you to be aware. Here's what you need to know. Your soul is out to destroy you. This is what we've been talking about in Habakkuk. There is something inside of us that's broken. It's called sin nature. And our sin nature doesn't like our success. It, it's, it's, it's like the, the, the cutting of oneself. If you know somebody that cuts themselves, he, let me tell you what's going on in that situation. If you, don't, if you don't understand it, praise the Lord. But if you do understand it, here's what's going on. The inside is hurting, and it makes sense when the outside matches that pain. It, it makes sense to the mind to actually cut oneself. Now, there's more ways to do it than just a razor blade. One of the ways, the most popular way of cutting oneself is not with a razor blade. It's with their own tongue. And sometimes it doesn't even make it out the tongue, it happens in the deep, greedy recesses of a broken soul or a mind. It's when someone says, oh, you look nice today, and they say, I do not. That's cutting yourself. It's just not as yucky as the razor blade on the outside of your body, but it is cutting yourself. Hey, you look, you, you look good today. Stop. Don't do that. Love you, honey. Don't, don't even try. Just the self-protected walls are up. Let me tell you something. Your own tongue can shoot arrows at yourself, and it might not even cross your tongue. But your tongue is connected to your heart. Now, in the Bible, when it talks about heart, it's not talking about the organ in your chest that pumps blood. Your aorta, you know. That's, that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about the seat of your emotions. Your heart is your mind, your emotions, and your will. That's your heart. And so your heart, can, you can make up your mind, listen, against yourself. Now, here's why, here's why I'm trying to make you aware. You need to understand sometimes what you're thinking is stinking. And it seems right, but the Bible says this, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So there's a possibility that in communication, you have a self-protective filter up that's destroying every good thing that's coming towards you and turning it to bad. This is possible. I know it doesn't seem possible because we're all smarter than that. But it's very possible, and all of us can do it. I have done it. You have done it. Somebody say, honey, all God's children have done it. This is what we do. We have a self-protective filter on our ears, even on our eyes. We can't see what someone's saying. We can't see the body language. We can't. I have had people, while I'm going like this for a hug, my words are pushing them away. And it's the weirdest thing. It's like, man, why don't you, since you're so attuned to hearing my words push you away, why don't you look at my body language instead of my words for a second? Let's see if we can get that filtered out. I'm, I'm approaching you in a loving way, and you're fighting it, and you're running from it. Give me the benefit of the doubt on the terminology and see the pose of my heart has been X. If you've ever been in communication with someone that is struggling with the soul, you know it's almost not worth the time to talk. And in a godly biblical community, we cannot fall for that lie, that it's not worth the time to talk. What we have to do, the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. One of the things that happens in church that is very violent is because we don't want to speak the truth because of how we're afraid that person that's obviously not in a good frame of mind is going to receive it. We, the truth speakers, fall silent. 
And what we're doing in that moment is very violently, we're confirming the lie that's in the other person's mind. This is why God said to let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So next time that one of you men are in a conversation with another man and it goes something like this, well, you know how women are. They're all that way. Can't live with them. Finish it. Can't live without them. Okay, this is when truth speakers need to speak up. Because whatever's going on in the other person's mind is there is a lie about an entire half of the population, an entire gender being painted with one broad brush stroke, and boy, didn't we get mad this past couple months with all of this mess going on in the world where one whole gender's right and one whole gender's wrong. And by the way, it doesn't even matter which gender you are. You've fallen on one side of that frustration. Someone told me more women are frustrated with what's going on than men are right now. It's, it's crazy. If, if somebody says it, it's the end of it. As long as they're this specific gender. It's, it's, the, it's the transverse of what maybe was happening years ago when women weren't allowed to vote, women weren't allowed to speak, women had to walk 10 feet behind somebody. Hey, I don't want to go back to those days, nor do I think it's right to switch roles and the men take that position. It's time for us to realize that your gender has nothing to do with your communication being right or wrong. Your spirit is what is going to determine. Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Let me show you some other verses. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. Luke 6, 45. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. Good man, good heart, good treasure, good fruit, brings forth what's good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. Here's what I need you to understand about this verse. It's not the words. It's the heart behind the words. How many of you figured out that the politicians and lawyers, is there a lawyer here today? I always get a lawyer that comes up to me. I say, thanks a lot, man. You know, I'm trying to make a living here. You're killing me. Uh, have you figured out that they can be saying one thing and they're going somewhere completely different with it? They're, they're steering the entire room towards the way but you're like agreeing with them you're like yeah Hollywood does this really good have y'all had this experience yet where you as a Christian are watching a show and you're rooting for the mass murderer in the show you're like come on man oh, oh he got away good yeah he got away from the police I mean they can make you as a Christian in favor of the villain the villain is like you're like rooting for him man you're like you, I, I have caught myself going this oh lord help him The Lord ain't going to help him. He's a killer. He is a stone cold bad dude. And I'm over here just like, come on, man, one more season. You got to survive. I need one more season. And, and, and here's, what, here's what happens. You, you can be swayed with your feelings and your emotions to be rooting for the wrong team. You ever woke up on the wrong side of the football? That's a bummer. It's like, yeah, I do believe that, but right now I'm arguing for this. <laughs> you know, I don't know how that happened, but now my male ego's engaged and I ain't changing. <laughs> and, and that's not good. So here's what we have to understand. The good man is defined by the treasure of his heart. The evil man is defined by the treasure of his heart. You don't get to pick to be a good man or an evil man. You only get to decide how your heart is going to communicate hear how your heart hears and how your heart speaks that is where the battle is long before it gets to the tip of the tongue long before it gets to the ears of the listener long before it gets to the emoting or the facial expression isn't it fun now with these these iPhones now that can create your own memoji anybody doing this yet playing with your own memoji you can create a cartoon picture of your own head I have always, my entire life, wanted to be a cartoon. My brain works kind of on a cartoon level. And so now I get to be my own cartoon. And man, with all this facial recognition stuff, you could do your eyebrows, you could make your mouth move, you stick your tongue out like an arrow. It's great. All kinds of things you could do. Long before your facial expressions 
do whatever they're going to do, your heart is made up. You could put a mask on it. You could put kind words on it. But you're already evil or you're already good. That's what this verse is saying. Before communication has its first decibel of sound, you are already evil or good. What happens next is inconsequential to your heart's condition. This is what all I'm trying to get you to do is to be aware. Man, preacher, did you hear what they said? <gasps> preacher, they didn't even say. Man, I'm so over what they said or didn't say. I want to know their heart. And I want you to understand your heart. Some of you are trying so hard to be a good Christian, but you're not dealing with your heart. And, and you've got some evil tendencies, and you're trying to be good, and you're so frustrated. You're frustrated. It's like trying to stop a river. It's like trying to change the tide of the ocean. You have an evil heart, and you're trying so hard to be good, it's killing you. This Christian life is wearing you out. And man, you're just gonna, you're saying things like this. Well, one day we get to heaven and we get a godly mind, it's going to be good. I'm like, hey, did you know you can get one now? I mean, you can't pick it up at Walmart. It's going to take a little bit of work, but you can get a godly mind now. That's what I want you to be aware of. So here's how it's going to work if we can understand this at a church. Ivan's going to say something that's just the jerky. Isn't this so common for Ivan just to say something so jerky? How many of you can't even imagine Ivan saying something jerky? Crystal, can you imagine Ivan saying? Yeah, yeah, she's, she's, a, she's, she's got five illustrations written down right now. She's, he can do it, okay? So here's what I think a healthy church looks like. Ivan says something totally jerky, and I go, that don't mean nothing. See, let me tell you what I know about Ivan. I have walked with him in biblical community long enough to know he's got a good heart. And I am not going to let an idle word, an unfit word, an angry moment disparage the character of a good man. I'm not going to do it. I'm not even, even if it's his own word, I'm not going to do it. I am by faith going to give him grace, mercy, and maybe even a little truth. Hey, man, don't. That's not like you. Crystal isn't that bad, Ivan. <laughs> it's okay, man. You got to. <laughs> Never happened. Never one time. I just totally made that up. Here, here's what we need to understand. We need to start knowing each other past the words. Past the words. Some of you are married for many years and you don't know the person you're married to past the words. And so they're either making you feel good with the verbiage or they're making you feel bad with the verbiage and you do not see the person behind the verbiage. Many of you have been in multiple relationships looking for somebody that will get all their verbs right. And the truth is you may have already been with three or four good hearts. Or you may keep finding evil hearts are attracted to you for some reason. And that probably has something to do with your heart too. Uh, what's that great Bible verse? Birds of a feather flock together. I don't think it's a Bible verse, but anyway. Um, <laughs> Proverbs chapter 18. Let me show you another one. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. What is the it? They that love it. What's the it? It's a good Bible study question. Look at that verse. What is it? Anybody have an opinion? The tongue? Maybe. Might be death or life, right? I'm not going to land on this, but I'll tell you what my observation is. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love life shall eat the fruit thereof, or they that love death shall eat the fruit thereof. That might be what it's saying there. I mean, here's what I want you to understand. Your heart, it loves what it loves. So if you have a self-sabotaging soul, let's say you, remember our Habakkuk study, let's say at a young age you made some agreements with some lies, 
And you've self-protected those lies. Those lies have never been challenged by anybody because you won't let anybody even know you're thinking it. It's just right here in a little secret part of your brain that only you have jurisdiction of. And you say what you're supposed to say, but you think what you're supposed to think. And what you're supposed to think is what your soul wants you to think. And you have some death agreement. The wages of sin is death. You have some sinful, deadly beliefs, lies that you have agreed to in your soul. And what's happening is you're eating the fruit of that. So when somebody talks to you and gives you life, you don't eat that fruit. Ain't nobody got time for that. You look nice today. Shut your mouth. Hey, I'm sorry. What's your gender? Oh, that came out of the mouth of a man? I ain't listening to it. Excuse me. What's your gender? Oh, oh, you're a woman? Sorry. I don't listen to that. I ain't got nothing to say. I ain't got nothing to hear. So we've killed an entire gender. This is what's going on in our country right now. Somebody needs to wake up. I made a promise to this church when I became pastor. I would preach sermons that are applicable to behavior change for what's going on in current day. We have a real problem in our country right now. And the problem is this. We don't even know what truth is. And we don't even care to understand what truth is. We want our truth to be heard. And our can be anything from a D to an R to an I, uh, de Democrat, Republican, or Independent. It could be from a male to a female. It could be from young to old. Our truth is ours and we own it. And that, the, the Word of God says that God is truth. You don't have truth. You have opinions. And the Bible says, let God be true in every man. And that means women too, ladies. It's a, it's a gender neutral term. Let every man be a liar. God is the truth. So when we come with our understanding, there's a way that seems right to a man or a woman. The end thereof are the ways of death. Listen, you, death and life are in the power of the tongue. How much are death and life in the power of the tongue? How did God create life? He spoke it, didn't he? He let there be light. There was light. Let there be darkness. There was darkness. He let there be fish in the sea. Let there be cattle on the hillside. He spoke and life began. Now let me tell you what words are. Words are breath. You need to understand this about your body. If you can't breathe, you can't talk. Breath is words. Your breath crosses the vocal cords and makes sound, uh, right? And then your mouth and your tongue and your teeth form the words. You ever seen someone with no teeth? They talk a little different, don't they? You ever met someone that doesn't have a tongue? They talk very differently. So your lips, your teeth, and your tongue Form and right, you can make different sounds, and you've learned the English language. Some of you have, some of you haven't. <laughs> it's part of just being in this part of the country. Are y'all coming up there? That, that's that's banjo. That's not English, but I like it. I I kind of I get to my foot tapping when some people talk around here. It's fun, and uh, so you. But you've learned to speak. Southern or English or whatever we're speaking down here, right? I love when people from the north come down. Hey, it's so good to see you around here. I'm glad you're here. And boy, they're just like, I don't even know what that was. It was like a drive-by shooting or something happened. I don't know what that was. God, listen to what God, do you know why your words are more powerful than a lion's roar? Because God didn't breathe into the lion the breath of life. It's important for you to understand. If you know the creation story, out of the dust of the ground, God formed Adam. And Adam did not become a living soul yet. A hair, a heart, fingers, toes, legs. Don't let some evolutionist tell you that we are equal with animals. They do not understand what's about to happen next. See, God spoke giraffes into existence. He formed man. 
common creator, common design. Yes, giraffes walk on legs and men walk on legs because the same creator designed both of them. But what God did next separates mankind from the beasts of the field because God bent over and breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life. And at that instant, man became a living soul. This is where I get in trouble with animal lovers. Animals don't have souls. Because they did not become living souls by the breath of God. I know. I know. It's so hard. But it's so true. Animals are animals. People are not. And it's time we stop living like animals. We are mating like animals. We are as unfaithful as animals. We are driven by animal instinct. And it's time for us to recognize we have a different breath inside of our lungs than the animals. By the way, PETA did not approve of this message. But I didn't ask them to. God approves of this message. When he breathed his life into us, if you love the life that God breathed and the truth that God is, that fruit tastes good to you. Something very interesting happened. Satan came to the garden and he brought a different appetite and he introduced it to mankind in the form of a fruit and he said, eat this and be wise. Eat this and be like God. We, should, we were already created in the image of God. What Satan really meant is eat this and be like me. I was kicked out of heaven. His name was Lucifer. He was kicked out of heaven because he desired in his heart to be as the most high. God kicked him and a third of the angels out of heaven. And now on planet earth, God created man and woman. He breathed into man the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And they're walking in the common unity with God. They are in common communication, communication with God. That is one comment. Uni means one, right? One understanding, one comment, one one nation that understands one communication. Why do we have such a divide in our country right now? Because our communication has been packaged and hand-delivered to Satan to tamper with any way he wants to and give it back to us. This is why the floor of the Senate has been talking past each other for the last hundred years. There was a day when both sides of the aisle of the Senate feared God and their differences were not about God. Their differences were about all these other little things. But we were a Judeo-Christian nation. The reason the communication is going down, by the way, if you look at the Supreme Court justices, the way they've been voted, it was like 60% of the other party was in favor, then 20%, then 10%, and now it's a dead split save one. And by the way, it would happen the other direction too. What's happened is there's no common unifying nation. There's no communication in our nation anymore. We don't have anything in common. We don't respect life. We don't re we, we've made killing a baby just another day at the office. We've killed 60 million babies in this world, and we say we have respect for life. No, we don't. We as a nation don't even have respect for our own lives while we're pumping black tar heroin into our veins, while we're drinking alcohol at, at, at nauseum. We are, we are absolutely in disrespect of our own bodies. We are trading the secret intimacy of our souls with hundreds of different people in a lifetime. The, the communication and, and the proliferation of greed is at rampant levels in our nation right now. And it's time for some pastors and some churches to stand up and say so. 
And I say it without any shame, and I'm speaking to both sides of the aisle. I'm speaking to both sides of the gender. I'm speaking to both sides of Christian and non-Christian. We have got to start respecting each other again. If somebody walks into this church that's of a different sexual orientation or is of a different way of dressing, you love them, period. I didn't say approve of everything. You love them because Christ loves them. I am so glad that my position of the week does not determine God's love for me. I am so glad that the color of my skin does not determine God's love for me. I am so glad that the gender that I have does not determine God's love for me. I do not have to self-identify as anything else to get God's love. He loves me for me, and he loves you for you. And I don't know who's been miscommunicating to you, but you need to know this. It's miscommunication or you've had a heart not to hear it. Either way, the communication's messed up. God loves life, and if you'll learn to love life, you'll learn to love the words of God. It'll be fruit to your soul. Let me give you another verse. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. We're laying the groundwork for this study. I hope you're enjoying it. Matthew 12, 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak and women they shall give, did you ever think I'd have to add that to every verse we read in the Bible because of how jacked up our culture is? Oh, that one's talking to the men. Okay. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Shazam. Every word, you're going to give an account to God for every word? I've got other verses that are worse than this one. Every thought, every intent of the heart. If you get all your words real nice and neat and packaged in a Jesus wrapping paper and send them out of your mouth every time with just dripping with Jesus, he still looks at your heart. He still knows the intents of your heart. This is big because here's what I want you to understand. We as a church are going to stand before the Almighty and we are going to give an account for our message. And if you think our message as a church is my message on Sunday, I'm just going to say not yet it's not, but it can be. We can start to agree with truth in a community that death is spoken by. Hey, listen. Listen. Some of the loudest preachers in our community speak death. I'm just going to let that land. Some of the loudest causes in our community speak death. I'm not here to fight with men or programs or things that are happening in our community. But I'm here to tell you, if they don't have time for the truth, it's death. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end there are of are the ways of death. That's what the Bible says. You show me an organization or a person that has no time for the truth of this book, and I'm, I'm sorry, by nature of not caring at all about truth, they're death speakers. And by the way, there's some of them in this room, and you might be one of them. Because you have a self-sabotaging soul that loves to cut itself. And your story and your experience and your opinion is the driving force of everything you think. And then you come to church and go, hey, brother, that's a good message right there, preacher. And you treat your neighbor like garbage. And your family is all having to drink of your lie every day of their life. Don't make dad mad. Don't, don't, I, no, dad, dad's coming home. Everybody straighten up. Hey, you know how your mom is. Just don't, don't get her going tonight. Oh, let's have a good night. Got to have a good night. There's some teenagers in this room. The entire home is on pins and needles because of your tood, your attitude. Like it, hey, honey, she 
came home from school in a good mood, should we try to do something as a family? No, that'll mess it up. We don't want to mess it up. Everybody just let her, let her be. She's like a stick of dynamite walking around. Put the dirt light out. Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Now, let me, let me, let me kind of take this into a little bit more of an understanding. We'll wrap it up. We're going to talk about good, good communication. And good communication is not for the weak of heart. It is a powerful person-only sport. If you do not have some chutzpah, if you don't have some fortitude, intestinal fortitude, if you don't have some, let me, let me put it into the South, if you don't have some guts, you're not going to be able to do it. Because if you're a teenager with no guts, some other teenager's like, hey, let's try this. This will be fun. And you're like, okay. <laughs> That's not intestinal fortitude. Intestinal fortitude is something, I ain't doing that. <laughs> you're crazy. You're, hey, if you do that, I'm telling I know, dog, snitches get stitches, yo, you can't tell. Tell! Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Give them the, give them the service of telling them you're going to tell before they do it. No, if you do that, I'm going to tell. You're welcome. That was premeditated warning you prior to you being a moron and doing something you shouldn't do. You are welcome for such a good friend as me. Oh, well, they won't like me. Why do you want the crowd to like you? Oh, now we're getting into your heart. See, what you really want is what they're doing. But you don't want to be that kid, so you just kind of float like a dead fish downstream. And then maybe later you can go, well, they did it. No, you, you ended up exactly where you wanted to. You did exactly what you wanted to do. And I'm not just talking to the teenagers, full-grown adults. Well, I don't know why I always end up doing this stuff. Because uh, you chose to? Well, I couldn't help it. I just, you know. No, you got in the habit of not saying so. Floating downstream like a dead fish and ending up everywhere everybody in the stream went. And now you want to blame them. Stand up, man up, woman up, and own it. And all the women livers said, that's what I thought, yeah. <laughs> this is real woman power that no one wants. Uh, they want to yell and scream in someone else's face for their perspective. When are the women of God going to stand up on the truth of God and not be ashamed of words like submission? All right, move it along. <laughs> I'm telling you, we need it. We, hey, listen, everybody wants a pastor that's in submission to God, but he better not mention in submission in genders, except God mentioned it. We got a problem right there. And if you're not careful... Your heart's going to identify itself with your body language. With your, you know, it's not just the tongue that's like darts. Your eyes can be like darts too. Your countenance can be like darts too. This is what we call a church shrinker message. When you preach like this, the church gets smaller because there's a lot of women that run their homes and then they leave. It's time to say... Hey, let's separate the sheep from the goats here. You eat, I don't care if you're a man or woman. You either love the truth of God's word or you don't. Preacher, you can't preach like that. Yes, we can. Somebody needs to. This nation is going to hell. We need to wake up and understand that the communication is where a lot of this nation's turmoil is coming. This nation is too powerful to be destroyed by any other nation on earth. We're going to have to do it ourselves, and we are. We are destroying ourselves from the inside out. We are greedy, we are arrogant, and we're speaking from that place. And you can hear it every time you turn on your TV. 
Luke 6, 45 says, For the abundance of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Body language, facial expressions, words, tone. You may have never been taught how to communicate. Maybe you don't know how to communicate what you're thinking or what your emotions are and, and desires to others. But let me tell you something. You will communicate your heart. You don't have to be taught. So rather than telling you all the words to say, as a pastor, I just want to invite you to get to know Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. If we as a church could become not just a community that communicates, but if we could become a biblical community, a community that is in love with God and his truth, even when it corrects us, love it. Love it. Coach me up, coach. I want to be a better player. Rip my face off, coach. I want to be a better player. Make me do push-ups, coach. I want to be a better player. We've got to get that attitude into the pews instead of just on the athletic fields. Why is it a manly thing to let a coach rip your face off, but wimps find a different church? Man up. Woman up. Give us some truth, preacher. If it's hard to swallow, we'll take a spoonful of sugar with it. At least the worship was good. Whatever you got to do, but get it down and say, God, I want truth on the inward parts in my mind. I've got to wrap it up. There's so much. This is going to be a good study if someone comes back. This was, I think, the worst part of it. Congratulations. I blindsided you. I thought about calling it, come and get ticked at the preacher Sunday. And I thought, I don't know. There might be other people that have left. Come back for that one. I, I just don't, don't want that. So look at somebody. And as best as you can communicate it right now, say something positive to them. Would you do that? This is called homework in class. How many of you communicated it without saying a word? Anybody? Anybody just lean over and hug it? Look at it, smile. Isn't it amazing? Communication is powerful. You do it so many different ways. I love you, church. I love you too much not to communicate the truth to you. And so we're going to go on a truth journey here. We're going to learn about communication. We're going to find out it's, it's not a man's fault thing. Men don't talk. There's some women should stop, to be honest with you. Is that all right? Can I say that and still shake hands afterwards? <laughs> All right, let's pray. Father, we need you in this study. Oh, God, please. Satan has won the battles, but, Lord, we refuse to say he won the war. We are going to come back at this as a church, and we're going to learn to communicate with one another. And Lord, I know that some of my words have fallen on filters today, and I've triggered some people, and they're probably a little upset. But, Lord, I just want them to be aware that that's what happens with communication. If they know my heart, they know that I'm not necessarily what their mind is telling them I am. That I'm not attacking. That I'm not trying to divide the, the genders. That I'm not trying to give men power over women. Lord, that is so far from who I have been and who I am and who you are. Lord, I actually believe that women are the glory of your creation. I believe that when Eve walked up, Adam was so amazed at what he saw that he gave her his name. That is powerful. I have the same opinion of the ladies of this church. They are amazing, amazing ladies. I also think when Eve walked up and saw Adam... She didn't feel like a doormat when he gave her his name. I believe she felt treasured, honored, and was equally as excited to see him. Oh, what damage Satan has done to our culture. God send him back to hell where he belongs. 
Keep him out of McDowell County for a season, God. I pray that he'd have no place in this community. I pray that the hearts of the people in this room would seek truth and buy truth and sell it not and speak truth. And God, would we create a wave of truth in McDowell County that could change lives. Please, God, in your name.